Half a million calories in a single mouthful. Not the diet I'd want to be on. But the baleen whales like humpback, right whales and blue whales do this by filter feeding. So how does filter feeding work? Well, the bigger the mouth, the more efficient filter feeding becomes. For example, the blue whale's mouth is massive. You can fit about 100 people inside. So that in a single mouthful, a blue whale engulfs about 120 tonnes of water. And when feeding in waters where there's lots of krill, well, there's your half a million calories. At least 6,000 of these Lindor dark chocolate balls. To capture those large quantities of tiny prey, baleen whales filter feed enormous volumes of seawater. Today, baleen whales are completely toothless. Instead of teeth, they have rows of filtering combs called baleen. It's keratinous material like your hair and nails, and it grows from the upper jaw, hanging down into their mouth. The ancestors of modern baleen whales didn't even have baleen. How baleen evolved is a bit of a mystery. Originally, it was thought that these early whales used both. They used their baleen for filter feeding and teeth for capturing prey one at a time. The leopard seals feed on krill in a similar way to those ancestral whales. They use their cheek teeth to sieve out small prey, but their front teeth, their canines, to chomp on large prey. They need to protect these delicate sieving teeth. But it was different for the ancestral baleen whales. Their delicate baleen grew between their teeth. Imagine how delicate and easily damaged something like this baleen would be. If they chomped down on their prey, they damaged this delicate baleen. So the ancestral whales probably had suction feeding, again, like you see in leopard seals today. If they open their mouth wide and draw back their massive tongue, a vacuum forms and water, hopefully laden with prey, is sucked into the mouth. This is an efficient form of hunting if you have access to swarming small prey. But you don't need teeth for suction feeding. So although those ancestral whales had teeth, they no longer needed them. And the fossil record shows that with time, teeth disappeared in different forms of whales. So as they lost teeth, there was more room in their jaw to grow baleen. And having an enormous broom in your mouth, it was an extremely efficient filter feeding system. You no longer need to swallow the seawater to eat the prey. Pushing your tongue up against your palate squeezes the water out through this broom-like baleen back to the sea, leaving behind in your mouth only wriggling prey ready to swallow. Basically, baleen is an ideal strainer. It was a game changer. And it was at this time that baleen whales became the giants we know today. But it's expensive to lunge feed. They need to accelerate into those prey swarms. Blue whales swim at up to 37 kilometres per hour. They're one of the fastest animals swimming in the ocean. But as they open that mouth to suck in vast amounts of prey laden water, they slow. Opening that mouth is like opening a parachute underwater. It drags and slows their 30 metre long body. And you know yourself when you're swimming, it's those initial strokes to get your body moving. They take much more energy than once you're gliding through the water. Well, it's the same for the whales. And for the blue whale, which needs to get its 180 tonne body going, well, you can just imagine, it takes a lot of energy. It's so expensive that if they feed in areas of low prey density, then it costs them to open that mouth to eat. And that's probably why they swim past patches of prey if they're at low densities. Baleen whales no longer have teeth. They specialised on this unique feeding system to harness the energy efficiency of eating lots of low trophic prey. But this means they need enormous quantities of this prey. Antarctic krill stocks are down by as much as 80% and they have been for a long time, as long as 30 years. Where many whale populations have recovered from hunting, the Antarctic blue whale is still critically endangered. Hunting stopped in 1966, yet they're still only 3% of their pre-exploitation population. Has being the largest animal on Earth made the blue whale vulnerable to extinction?